Hey, everybody. This is the second part of graphing more complicated rational functions. And so our question here is, um, uh, what features are helpful to identify the graph of rational functions? So we'll just do some more examples here. So here we go. So recall with rational functions, when the top equals zero, that gives us the x-intercepts. When the Remember, rational means fraction, you guys. So when the bottom equals zero, that gives us the vertical asymptotes. When the degree of the top equals the degree in the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals the leading coefficients, okay? And if you need to reduce it, then reduce it. And when the degree of the top is less than the degree in the bottom, then there is a horizontal asymptote uh, at y equals zero, which is just your x-axis. We had a couple of those. And then when the degree in the top is one greater than the bottom, then the slant asymptote is obtained from long division. Okay, we can do synthetic division also, um, and we always disregard the remainders. Okay, so here we did this one in the last one. So here we can't make the top equal to zero, so there was no x-intercept, so it did not cr cross this x-axis right here. And we can't make the bottom equal to zero. If that was x squared minus one, it would equal zero. But, but since we can't make the bottom equal to zero, there's no vertical asymptotes right here, okay? So then we just made a T-chart and started plugging in, and we got these points going up here. So there's our graph. It's flaring down towards the asymptotes right there, okay? And our domain was all real numbers because it went to the left and right forever, and our range was it was uh, in between this spot here. So the a range is a Y answer, how much it goes up and down. It doesn't go down to zero. It... it asymptotically gets uh, close to this asymptote right here, asymptote, okay, and it goes through six, so we include six, okay, then we graphed this guy right here, okay, so <clears throat> here the degrees are both twos because it's squared, so we had a horizontal asymptote right here, y equals this two over one, so it was y equals two gave us this horizontal asymptote. The vertical asymptotes are when the x squared minus 9 equals 0, so at plus or minus 3, these vertical asymptotes right there. Okay, and then we got a, uh, an x-intercept right there at 0 because that's when 2x squared equals 0. So then we just plot these points and we, we find that it gives us these guys and these guys. So that just told us that we're going down towards the asymptote and up here and same over on this side. And then we got this kind of horseshoe one right here. And our domain was all left over here, including in here, and all right over here. So it was all real numbers except for through these vertical lines. So x doesn't equal uh, plus or minus 3. And then the range was it's less than or equal to 0 from this part. And we're not including this part, so in union with uh, greater than uh, 2. Okay, so it goes up forever, and it comes down to 2. It doesn't touch y equals 2 right there. Okay, then we graphed this guy. Okay, so we got x-intercepts when we factored the top. This factors to x plus 4, x minus 1. So we got negative 4 and positive 1 as our x-intercepts. Okay, these were going by 2s right there. We got a vertical asymptote from x equals 2. That's when the denominator equals 0. Okay, and then um, uh, and then we got the slant asymptote by doing long division. We divided this into this, and I think we got y equals x plus 5. So there's y equals x plus 5, this slant asymptote right here. And then we just started plotting some points, and we got these points, and it, it went towards the asymptotes. Okay, we plotted all these points right there. All right, so there. And then, um, so now let's go ahead and graph this function right here. Okay, state the domain and range. Okay, so... Here the top equals 0 when x equals 1. So there's a, an x-intercept at x equals 1. Okay, the bottom one, is that what I did now? Oh, okay, so the denominator is greater than the numerator. So whenever the denominator, because there's two x's downstairs, so this is x squared degree, degree is 2, the degree of this is, is 1. Whenever the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree on top, we get a horizontal asymptote right there. Okay, so y equals 0, and then we get some vertical asymptotes. When we set this equal to 0, we get 2, and this equal to 0, we get negative 3. So there's our vertical asymptotes, and then we can just start um, plotting some points. Now, now I originally started this graph from negative 5 to positive 5, and then I started adding in some 2.5s just to get more of a general graph. You don't have to do that. I just did. So here we go. We know we get um, at 1, we get the uh, intercept of 0. 
That's when the top equals zero. So I know it's going through there somehow, and it's going to approach these asymptotes somehow. All right, so let's plug in negative 5 right here. Let's plug in negative 5. So I'll plug in negative 5 right here, negative 5 minus 1, negative 5 minus 2, negative 5 plus 3. I just plugged it in right there. Okay, this is negative 6. This is negative 7. This is negative 2. So we get um, uh, negative 6 over, uh, over positive 14 is a negative 0.43. So that's this guy right there, negative 5, negative 0.43. Let's plug in negative 4 next. So when we plug in negative 4, we get, um, uh, what do we get? We get point, uh, negative 0.83. So not quite to negative 1, but it is down lower than this one, okay? So I'm suspecting it's going to go down like this, okay? All right, and then we're going to plug in uh, negative 2, okay? So when we plug in negative 2, we get 0.75. All of a sudden, it's above this guy right there. So there's 0.75 at negative 2, okay? I'm suspecting it's doing something like this. I'm suspecting, okay? So let's keep going. So let's plug in um, negative 1. So when we plug in negative 1, we get... Um, uh, 0.33, okay, so there it is, negative 1.33. I got a, I'm on my prep period, and there's a class behind me. It's, you're in a, a social mood right now, so you can hear them in the background through this really thin wall. All right, so when we plug in uh, zero, we get uh, 0.17 right there, okay. So um, uh, just barely go up about a tenth or maybe two tenths, uh, 0.17, okay? Then I plugged in all this um, uh, negative 2.5 is this one right here. We got 1.56. So negative 2.5 gave me 1.56. I'm just confirming my suspicions, okay? Then I tried 1.5 and I tried 1.5. Uh, did I try 1.5? I guess I didn't. Uh, oh, yeah, right here. 1.5. So 1.5 minus 1 is 0.5. So that was this piece. So I get a negative 0.22. So it's right about there. Okay. And then so let's uh, let's try 3 and 4. So I'm just uh, uh, um, plugging in some other points. So here's 3. When we plug in 3, we get 0.33. Okay. So let's plug in 4 and uh, 5. So I get those points right there. So it looks like it's going to go whoosh, uh, up right there. Okay. So um, I did try um, 2.5. Um, uh, okay. So here is a one. Here's two. Here's 0.5, and I get 0.55 just to kind of, you know, for to confirm my suspicions. It's probably going to go shooting up right there. So there it is, something like that. Okay, there's our our good looking graph. Okay, so our domain is all everything except those vertical asymptotes. So x doesn't equal negative three or positive two, and it goes up and down forever on that. So the range is all real numbers. Okay, let's try this one here. Okay, this graph is appropriately set up. First factor. So so then we can set the top equal to zero, and that gives us um, when x equals negative 2, when I set that equal to zero, and x equals positive 1. That's my x-intercepts. Okay, and I got a vertical asymptote asymptote when the denominator equals zero at negative three. All right, and since the top is one greater in degree than the bottom, then we can get the slant asymptote by long division. You can synthetically divide also. Remember, we don't... Um, um, we don't keep the remainder, okay? So x times x gives me x squared, so we multiply x times x, and x times 3 gives me x squared plus 3x, and when we subtract, x minus 3x is a negative 2x, okay? So we do it again, and we get minus 2. So here's our slant asymptote, y equals x minus 2. There it is right there. All right, so now we're approaching those asymptotes. Let's go ahead and, and uh, make a t-chart right there, okay? We know we got those zeros right there. All right, so when we plug in negative 6 uh, into those, you can plug it in right up here if you want or into the factored form. I chose the factored form. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 4. This is negative 7. This is negative 3. So negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28 over negative 3. What's that? 9 and a third or something like that? Nine, yeah, negative 9.3. So here's negative 6. Here's negative 9.3, okay? I'm getting a suspicion it's going to do something like that, okay? And then same up here. It's probably going to go uh, something like this. Let's just plug in some more points right there. There's a negative 5. When we plug that in, we get negative 9, okay? When we plug in negative 4, Okay, so there it is. There's my little U-shape down there. So now I'm going to plug in, um, uh, what am I plugging in? Negative 1 right here. So negative 1, and when we do that, we get uh, 
we get uh, negative one right there. So there's our groovy looking graph right there when we plug all those guys in. Okay, and then our domain is um, uh, goes to the left over here from this graph. It goes to the right over here. It just doesn't cross this line. So the domain is x doesn't equal negative 3. The range, it looks like it's below 9 down here, and it looks like it's above negative 1 up here. So our, domain, our range is less than or equal to 9 in union with uh, greater than or equal to 1. Okay, here's one that gives us a hole right here. Okay, so let's graph this guy. Okay, so first factor that. Now, you can see that we have the same factors on top and on bottom, so they cancel each other out, and you're left with y equals x minus 1. Okay, all right, but first look, you guys, that denominator can never equal negative 3, because that would give us 0 in the denominator, and you can never have 0 in the denominator, even if it cancels out. So it's approaching the line y equals x uh, minus 1 right there, okay, but um, uh, it's going to give us a hole at at x equals negative 3 from the line right there, okay? So the graph becomes y equals x minus 1, so y equals mx plus b, all right? Remember, x can equal negative 3, so if we plug in negative 3 right here, negative 3 minus 1 gets us negative 4, so there's going to be a hole at, uh, at negative 3 comma negative 4 right there. So go ahead and graph that line, y equals x minus 1, go ahead and put the hole of negative 3 negative negative 4. Okay, so my domain is all left and right movement, except x can't be negative 3, which means y won't be negative 4 right there. All right, if you guys are sitting in my class, I'm going to give you that worksheet, and we'll probably go over that in class. Take care.